So as, as we're celebrating Black History Month in the UK, why is it important for educators and education providers as well to be aware of the challenges Black students face in terms of access to higher education institutions? Why does race matter here? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. And um, my belief is that the more we, we being we across the world, understand each other's context. So that is our culture, that is our language, that's our literature, that is our music, that's our food. The more we engage to understand those things, the better we as educators are in helping our students to rise to the occasion, helping our students to be able to grasp the information and the knowledge that we want them to have to be successful in college. So during Black History Month, this idea that here's an opportunity for us to share that information, for all of us to not only take take the information and say, oh, okay, this is what I understand, but then apply that for our, for our um, Black students to be see the pride in who they are and that they have a culture and a community that includes um, amazing people, but also that include a opportunity for them to connect with the broader world. And so to have that type of an engagement for educators to understand that context, again, it's not just about what they can't do or the struggle that may be going on because maybe they are a first generation, no one else in their family has gone to college, or maybe they are um, of a lower socioeconomic, that's but a piece of who they are. So let's get the full picture Let's grasp and appreciate the larger context. And then as educators, all with all, if we're empowered with that much information, then we're going to be able to get these students ready for college. And then on the other side, we're going to be able to support these students so they make it through college. So without that level of knowledge and engagement and being intentional about wanting to really know who our students are who our Black students are, not just what we've heard about them, not just the stereotypes, not just, you know, the scratching the surface, but if we really dive in during these celebration, these months of uh, celebration in the U.S., um, Black History Month is, is in February. And so, and across the world, the opportunity to have these types of months, weeks, days, whatever it is, so long as we intentionally um, dive in, grasp what we can gather and learn from the, the uh, about our students' cultural contacts, and then what then being able to say, okay, I can better understand where this is coming from. Or at the end of the day, we just want to make sure all our young people are well prepared as um, young adults to be able to be good contributors to the world. And so what are we doing to ensure that we, they can do that? Yeah, absolutely. I I really like this idea that you're putting, you know, about, you know, young people knowing their history and understanding their identity. And mm -hmm. Black History Month celebrations are exactly about that, celebrating the culture, but also raising awareness around the culture. Yes. The, the theme for, for this year's Black History Month in the UK is Black women and specifically their achievements and, and their contributions. So here we have this notion of intersectionality, which mm -hmm. is when you have two different identities that, you know, have been chronically underrepresented, yep. intersecting in, in one person, you know, as a Black woman, yourself, how does that resonate with you? Why does that matter? Does it matter more? Does it matter less? Yeah, no, great, great question. And the reason for me, you know, this is a personal statement here, the reason for me that it matters is because <clears throat> oftentimes society wants you to choose. You know, they want you to be be steady in a box. So they want you, me to be either black or they want me to either be a woman. And that's just not um, 
That's just not how I can. I stand at that intersection and everything that is black about me is female about me. And everything that is female about me is black about me. So there's no pulling those two apart. But, you know, it's very easy to ask someone to be just one thing. I only want to learn about one, you know. And so that is a challenge, I think, for women of color, period, in that that standing at that intersection, um, wanting to definitely be empowered and to empower as a woman, but knowing that I cannot do that outside of my Blackness. It will mm -hmm. be something that happens. Yeah. I remember once someone asked me, are you a woman first or are you Black first? I said, well, I don't know that it's my choice all the time. I said, when you see me, what do you see? Do you say, oh, there's a woman Black? Or do you say, oh, there's a Black woman? Mm -hmm. And I said, that is external to me, how the world makes that definition. So I'm not choosing to be out there as one or the other first because mm -hmm. I can't separate them. I am mm -hmm. I arrive as both in every situation that I'm in. Yeah. And both inform how I embrace the rest of what is going on around me. So to have this focus on um black women I think is really a great opportunity for that lesson of Black women, women of color in general, don't have a choice here. We come forward with our bringing both of these. And it's such a, a, a great um, contribution that we do make that oftentimes is put in a corner because folks don't know what to do with us. You know, they don't know how to, you know, yeah pull apart those two pieces yeah. that we are embracing and saying, yeah, no, you don't get to pull this apart. This is who I am. You know, if I'm going to be a part of the women's movement, I'm going to be a part of the women's mo movement and bring my, who I am as my culture with me. So I think having that emphasis, being able to see the connectedness of those two, the intersectionality of those, those two that are, and particularly considering we're talking about race and we're talking about gender and we're talking about themes that have been with us forever and have had sometimes very negative and sometimes very positive kind of um, narratives around them. And so I would like young you know, students, Black women students to see the fullness of that narrative, to see that when, you know, when you get to that place where it's a struggle of, of, of your identity, that there is um, a, a, a community of women who've been there, who, who, who you can now see that you admire or they're doing wonderful things and that you too will get there that you too, as you're coming to understand these pieces of yourself, you're gonna be able to embrace it in a very similar way. And so that there is hope, there is opportunity. And there's some great things that that our, our um, Black women students are doing out there to show who they are as women and to show who they are culturally um, as they, they, they think about their identity. So, yeah. you know, that's, as I think about students and how educators and how we, you know, work at this with students, um, I think just the the examples of role models, uh, in particularly for in this um, scenario of Black women, is so critical and so yeah. important um, for people to for young girls to see and to embrace and to feel really good about. Okay, that's the I can be on that track as well, and I can become that scientist. I can become that you know, teacher, I can become that, whatever it is that, that that the young girl is interested in. I think representation and visibility are key. And, you know, when you have a minority identity, it's, it's really, really key to see yourself represented as a young person. And the younger you are when you're exposed to, you know, proper, mixed, diverse representation, 
the more natural then it becomes, yeah, of course I can become the president of the, of the U.S. or the president of, you know, wh- whichever other country. It becomes mm-hmm. something really natural for somebody to dream like that. For the last question now in, in our chat, um, I wanted to bring it back to Cambridge. And mm-hmm. can you tell us a little bit about what Cambridge is doing in the U.S. to widen access to education for Black students? Yes, Cambridge being one of the um, top, you know, curriculums to prepare students uh, for college. One of the things I really appreciate about the Cambridge program is that it is in, you know, public schools across various types of neighborhoods, whether it's an inner city neighborhood or rural neighborhood, and that it gives access to a very diverse set of students to challenge themselves academically. And so it doesn't, it doesn't limit it to only allowing only this type of student or that subset of students access. And so that's what I really appreciate about it, that the curriculum is accessible. The curriculum is there to be able to challenge in a variety of different communities across the United States. Like I said, Florida is, is we've got lots of the curriculum across Florida and it is expanding across the United States with mm-hmm. relevance to connecting students to opportunities to be um, challenged and better prepared as they get ready to go off to college, off to university. Yeah, it, it's something that not a lot of people know about Cambridge, um, mm-hmm. that we can actually in the U.S., we're mostly in public schools. And looking at my cheat sheet over here on my other uh-huh. screen, we have over 500 public schools, over 35 states that now offer the Cambridge program. Yes. Um, and uh, in Florida, in the state of Florida, it's 388 schools and 56% of them have minority enrollment and 61% of students are coming from low income households. And then if you look at other um, you know, also in Virginia and Kentucky, you know, the, the mm-hmm. same picture. Yes. And, you know, part of it, you know, when you hear the word Cambridge, you know, mm-hmm. that's very, you know, distinguished. Um, it's very and, and that is fantastic for a student to connect with that. But mm-hmm. oftentimes people, people hear the name and assume that it's, you know, oh, they're going to deal with this particular level of student or community of students, where in fact, um, I think Cambridge is doing an amazing job in saying, this is about access. This is about ensuring that a a broad host of students, um, low-income, first-generation, students of color, um, have access to a curriculum that we know is um, preparing them for uh, success when they get to college. And so, but, you know, People don't really see that part of Cambridge. They see yes. the prestige of Cambridge. Yes. But yes. part of that prestige of Cambridge is its commitment to this kind of democracy of all of our students, all of our children having access to a curriculum that's going to set them up for success. Mm-hmm. So that's part of what the SHIAC, you know, we talk a lot about. How do we get the message out there? What are we understanding about it what's the what's the how do we get um, more people connected to it so internationally mm-hmm. and helping more families to see this is an opportunity and an option for your for your son or daughter so yeah it's, yeah, it's exactly. exciting it's exciting to make those connections for sure and it's, it's very exciting for us that students from low-income families uh, can use the Cambridge name in in their um, uh, in their qualifications to open up doors further, you know, to further mm-hmm. their career afterwards and their you know in higher education. And I'd also like to um, uh, showcase our A level and our IGCSC history syllabuses, where students can also. Um, uh, take an in-depth study on the civil rights movement in the U.S. and decolonization. So that's for the A level. And Mm -hmm. then in the IGCSC, you can do a depth study on any topic of of their choosing. And this could be, you know, they could choose to focus on a period of Black history specifically. 
So, you know, going back to what we were talking about earlier about, you know, young black students, you know, learning their place in the world and where they belong and where they're coming from. This could be a very, very good um, way to explore uh, black mm -hmm. history through their academic um, through their studies. Academics. Absolutely. And the um, the environment is set that says we value you. So let's figure let's help you Definitely. figure out um, what Definitely. what your contribution will be, you know, yeah. as you come yeah. to better understand. So, yeah, it it definitely is the type of curriculum that is thinking closely about its impact on the students and not just, OK, here, this one will prepare you for this type of a career or this type of a major and this one will prepare you. But no, let's integrate our understanding across, you know, a broad spectrum spectrum of academic foundations so you can be empowered, you know, when you get to campus just to just to move, no matter what kind of income level you're in, no matter whether or not your parents went to college, all of that, you know, this is a, a, a level setting opportunity for you just to grasp the information that's going to have you on really good footing by the time you get to mm -hmm. university. So, yeah, knowledge is power after all. It <laughs> is. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Zina. Thank you so much for this uh, this great chat. I feel like I've, I've learned a lot and hopefully our, our audience as well. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to interview you, to have this chat <laughs> with you. Yeah, thank you for for the opportunity to chat. You know, this is great. I, you know, like you said, it may be me in the US and you in Greece. This is in the UK. But at the end of the day, it is this international community that comes together and how we support our students um, throughout. So whatever that looks like or whoever's involved with that, we want exactly. them to know that to be culturally competent in that process is really going to be the best for our students. Yeah, and it's it's all about learning from each other, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Thank you so much, exactly. Zina. Lovely all right, to see you. good to talk with you. Bye bye, bye, -bye everyone.